Welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting March 16th, 2015. Let's jump right into the daily security bites. Today I'm going to use a small story about Pinterest security as an excuse to talk about a bigger information security trend around the increased adoption of HTTPS encryption. Pinterest, which is a popular social network image sharing site, announced this week that they're going to start to use HTTPS as their default communication. This of course is secure web communication that uses SSL TLS encryption. Now this is actually an increased trend in the industry. Many big websites have started to default to HTTPS. Sites like Google, YouTube, Facebook, Yahoo, Twitter, and many others have started defaulting to this secure communication. I believe it's in part due to the Snowden effect. Now that we know that governments and bad guys can snoop on our web communications, it's more important than ever to encrypt it. And this is a kind of a new trend. Security experts have always wanted us to use HTTPS, but it is resource intensive. So it hasn't been until the past few years that most web companies are starting to use it as the default communication. Ultimately, this is a good thing for security. HTTPS will increase your security. However, there is a hidden cost to HTTPS. First of all, there's the resource cost. It takes more power and ultimately time to encrypt and decrypt communications, and this increases the bandwidth we use on networks. But more importantly, and more ironically, there's a potential security cost to HTTPS, and it is that bad guys realize its value as well. Bad guys realize that legacy network security security controls cannot see into HTTPS encrypted traffic. So they started using command and control mechanisms and drive-by download servers that use HTTPS to hide their communication in hopes to evade traditional gateway antivirus solutions. Now the good news is modern next generation security appliances like WatchGuard's Firebox series can decrypt HTTPS communication in order to secure it. The catch is, as we increasingly adopt HTTPS communications, it's very important that your network security gear can keep up. So the moral of the story is, our increased adoption of HTTPS is good, but you need network security controls that can secure it, and most importantly, can keep up with the increased amount of HTTPS traffic out there. Now, recently, Frank Olhorst from eWeek did a review on our M500 Firebox, which is very, very good at doing HTTPS security very, very quickly. If you're interested to see how WatchGuard can help, be sure to check out Frank's article. Today's news is yet another big US-based healthcare data breach. Primera Blue Cross, which is a health insurer for the Northwestern US, warned that they suffered from an external cyber attack this week, and they said bad guys had access to servers containing over 11 million records belonging to customers, uh, employees, and partners. And these records contained a ton of uh, very useful information to attackers, things like your name, address, email address, but even more important information like your social security number and even sometimes bank account information. Now, we don't know a whole lot about how these bad guys got in. Primary did say they found out about the breach uh, late January, and they've contacted the FBI and external investigators to help investigate this attack. They've also cleaned up the malware associated with the attack. Though the bad guys seem to have access to the important servers, Primary says they can't find any hard evidence that they actually exfiltrated the data. That said, if you're a Primera customer, you're going to want to monitor your credit for identity theft. Now, the good news is if you go to PrimeraUpdate.com, you can actually learn how they'll offer you free credit monitoring and identity theft services for two years. Now, normally, the reason I point out these breaches is not only to inform customers, but to see what we can learn from the attack. Since Primera doesn't know how the attack happened, there's not a whole lot we can learn there. But there is one clear thing from this attack. Bad guys are targeting organizations that have valuable data. More specifically, they seem to be targeting business verticals. 
Last year, they were targeting the retail segment using point-of-sale malware that stole credit card information. After this attack and the Anthem attack, it seems this year, many bad guys are targeting healthcare organizations. And this was one of my security predictions for the year, that you'd see bad guys go after business verticals because different verticals store valuable information that bad guys are after. So the one thing you can learn from this is if you do work for a business vertical that has any sort of valuable information, you might want to bolster your security defenses this year. Today's story is proof that the Chinese government does have military uh, information security red teams that do cyber espionage. As you probably know, the US government often blames China for certain network attacks or information security attacks. And China has always denied any sort of government cyber hacking team. However, this week, the Center for uh, Intelligence Research and Analysis posted details from a translation from the Chinese government where they actually admit they uh, engage in offensive cyber operations using both military and civilian assets. They basically translated a document that comes from the People's Liberation Army of China. It's called The Science of Military Strategy. And within this document, the PLA actually says that they have red teams. Uh, both government, military, and civilian red teams that engage in hacking operations. So this just goes to show that many nation states are engaging in cyber hacking. Now you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with me? It's an interesting story, but nation state hacking is not going to affect me. I beg to differ. Recently I wrote an article for Dark Reading that talks about how nation state hacking is going to affect everyone. If you'd like to know the three reasons I think so, you should check out my article, but really it all comes down to the sophisticated techniques used by these nation states are leaking to the public, and organized cyber criminals are adopting them, and that means that normal criminal malware is evolving much faster than it has before. This is going to affect everyone, and everyone is going to have to increase their defensive capability to survive just normal cyber attacks. So I personally have strong beliefs that governments should avoid engaging in cyber warfare, and rather should focus on defense. Nonetheless, check out my dark reading article and let me know what you think. Today, I'm covering OpenSSL's latest security patch. Over the last few days, the InfoSec community has been abuzz about the pre-notification for OpenSSL's latest update, which supposedly was going to fix a highly critical vulnerability. After flaws like Heartbeat and the recent Freak, everybody's really focused on OpenSSL updates. Anyways, on Thursday, OpenSSL released the update, and while it does fix a number of security flaws, two of which they assign a critical rating, it's not as bad as many people had worried. The biggest vulnerability only affects version 1.0.2 of OpenSSL, and it's a DOS flaw. Without getting into all the specifics, essentially an external attacker that can access your OpenSSL server can actually stop it from responding to further connections. And while this is a significant vulnerability, if you have have a critical OpenSSL server, many people use older versions of OpenSSL. Besides that, they also changed the severity of the freak vulnerability, the one involving the RSA export uh, cryptography cipher. Apparently, more people use this particular cipher than the OpenSSL folks first thought. Besides that, there's a number of other moderate uh, OpenSSL fixes too, while though important, are not critically important to everybody out there. Now, now the takeaway here is still simple. If you use OpenSSL, you do want to patch. But if you don't use the latest version, 1.0.2, you may have a little more time to actually patch. You don't have to do it very aggressively. By the way, WatchGuard customers out there can feel comfortable knowing that the highest severity denial of service vulnerability does not affect us. Today I'm talking about the Cyber Information Sharing Act, or CISA. Last week, a Senate Intelligence Committee quietly passed CISA with a resounding 14 to one judgment. And CISA, of course, is really the reincarnation of CISPA, or the Cyber Information Sharing and Protection Act. At a high level, CISA is designed to set up a framework for private organizations and the government to share security intelligence. One thing they talk about are things like indicators of compromise, URLs, IPs, and file checksums that are known to be bad. 
Now, of course, the opponents of CISA mentioned that it could just be another surveillance act uh, giving government new authorities to get information from private organization. And they argue that the language in this bill does not uh, do enough to protect the privacy of customers uh, in these private organizations. Personally, I do believe there could be a value to private organizations, security organizations, and the government sharing some information. However, the language in this current CISA bill is very, very vague, and I tend to agree with a lot of the security opponents that think it doesn't do enough to protect privacy. Now, whatever I believe, if you're interested in this bill, you should check out a great Wired article about it. And just because it passed this Intelligence Committee panel does not mean it's law yet. It still, of course, has to go through the Senate and the rest of the U.S. government. But it's definitely something to keep an eye out. If you were following CISPA a few years back, this bill is essentially the new form of CISPA. So if you're a U.S. citizen, be sure to pay attention to this and let your voice be heard. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you found it informative and maybe a little entertaining. As always, be sure to visit our blog at blog.watchguard.com or at watchguardsecuritycenter.com. That's where I post this weekly video as well as a very deep reference section that will have links to many other security stories you might also be interested in. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at secadept or you can follow watchguard at watchguardtech. And of course, feel free to follow my YouTube channel as well if you want the videos immediately. In any case, thank you very much for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.